Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co-host and co-analyst, co-founder of theCUBE, Dave Vellante. Very excited for this next segment. We have two great guests, two CUBE alum. Jim Jackson, he is the EVP and Chief Marketing Officer at HPE. Welcome, Jim. Thank you. And Jason Newton, VP Global Marketing and HyperCloud at HPE. Welcome back to both of you. Yeah, thank you very much. We are so, thrilled to be here. And, and we are thrilled to be here because all of us are just fresh off of Antonio Neri's keynote, the first ever keynote in the sphere. He yeah. opened saying, big moments require big, men, big yeah. venues. Yeah. He welcomed us to his living room and then proceeded to make a bunch of bold <laughs> AI announcements and yeah. brought up Jensen Huang. So this, this is a really big moment for, for HPE. I want to start with you, Jim, and, and talk a little bit about how you're seeing HPE Discover this year as an event and, and, and how it's different from, from years past. Yeah, I mean, I would say, first of all, we started thinking about this really not so much as an event, but the biggest marketing activation that we have done since we became Hewlett Packard Enterprise. So, you know, we started started with that kind of a mindset. And we knew that we had a huge opportunity for the company, for the corporation, and we needed a venue to match the moment. Right? We needed something that would enable us to, to break through the noise in the market and do something different and iconic. And you know, as a, as a marketer, I also wanted to set a new bar for brand storytelling. How do we think about this? So uh, you know, we, we started talking with the Sphere early, and um, we started working on this keynote literally months ago. We learned a lot going through this process. And then, you know, clearly AI was the theme of the show, right? And AI, everybody's talking about AI in the market. It's a buzz. We've got a great story. And, but we needed to elevate that story, right? We needed to create that catalyst, that moment where everybody, all eyes were on us and we had a chance to tell it. The other thing is um, we, we wanted to make sure that we demonstrated to the market the depth of our partnership with NVIDIA. And you know, Antonio and Jensen did a great job and some great announcements today, you know, which build on things that we have done before. We, we have a decade plus partnership. And really, I think a lot of the depth here is in the co-development and everything that we're doing. And, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. And the other thing is just in, in the, the showcase, biggest showcase we have ever done, seven acres, 285,000 square feet, 400 demos. I mean, we're bringing everything here because we want our customers to touch, feel, have an opportunity to really go deep. So, you know, uh, we are really, really excited. We were excited coming into it. You know, obviously, you know, you, you, you got to get through it and make sure everything goes well. It went extremely well. The feedback, the buzz is exciting. And, you know, this is a, a huge opportunity for us. You know, I'm a big sports fan and sports are the greatest experience it, in, in my life, the, there's so much thought and drama that goes into it. And I, we started the Cube in 2010. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I have been calculating, I've been to almost 300 <clears throat> keynotes yeah. live, in person. This was by far, like incomparable, the best experience I've ever seen in any keynote, so congratulations. I, I, I didn't hear that. One, you know, <laughs> I, it's on, it's one on more time. Right, it's on, by far. <laughs> The graphics, the sound, the venue, uh, uh, in and out, uh, just, just the immersive experience, absolutely is amazing, amazing on par, maybe even above most sporting events, which as you know, yeah. are amazing. Yeah. You know, inside a stadium, or a football stadium, or college football, where the energy is just palpable. So yeah. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Got to feel good. It feels it tremendous. Feels good. Uh, it feels I mean, good. It, it's, uh, it's been a long slide. We started seriously working content 10 months ago. Um, tons of drafting of the story. We also wanted to bring that story to life here in the showcase like Jim talked about. So all of the stories you heard in the keynote are actually physically here and you can talk to the experts and, and pull them apart. Um, and uh, yeah, it's kind of like, it was perfect timing. We were first and there's only one first. And I think we set the bar really high. So how'd you yeah. pull that off? I mean, is this kind of it's kind of risky to be first, right? H HP generally, you don't think HP is a risk taker. But were you a little nervous about being first, or <laughs> you know, actually, we felt good about it. We we started talking to the Sphere. I don't know, probably about 10 months ago, maybe a couple months after Discovered last year, and started to really have a vision that we could be first, given the timing of where everything was and what we knew this would be a very important Discover. Uh, you know, certainly there's a few points along the way where you start to think like, okay, there's a little <laughs> bit of things that we, we got multiple things that we're balancing. 
But they were a fantastic partner. To Jason's point, we ran you know, a very tight process. We started early. Uh, we had to make some of the big decisions earlier in the process because that was really key when you think of the graphics and all the technology that's required. Um, but you know, we, uh, and we, we actually, the first mover advantage was very important. A lot of people were just excited, not only to be part of Discover and the message, but candidly to see the sphere as well, right? They were like, wow, this is something that, that's amazing. And uh, we really leveraged that buzz to, to give us you know, some, some additional uh, well, he, acceleration. He really, he, I mean, Jim really challenged the team. He's like, I don't want this to be a keynote. I don't want it to be a corporate keynote. You know, anybody can write a script and uh, you know, deliver some slides up on a big screen, but to craft and create and deliver an experience like our team did, I mean, that was, that's what made it so special. Yeah, being yeah. there was like Disney World. It really yeah. was, yeah. And, and also what you're both saying about how you're really giving people who are here the opportunity to touch, feel, and, and, and taste AI. Yeah. Um, Antonio Neri said, if you have any questions for me, go, go see my AI twin. That's right. First. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's really cool too. How do you, how do you dream up Here's what we're going to do, because as you said, this is a big moment for HPE. You wanted a venue to match the moment, and, and you're also trying to differentiate yourselves from, yeah. from, from others. How do you how do you come up with, okay, this is what we're going to do now. This is, this is, what, this is how we're going to make our, ourselves really stand out. Well, we start, like Jason said, we started this process several months ago, and, and clearly, you know, AI has been gaining more and more buzz. We started to really circle this as a point in time to bring our complete story together. And again, the sphere was the perfect opportunity for us to start to connect all of it. And, and you know, and think of it as that was the big moment where we, we kind of laid out the big premise that flows through the messaging is very consistent, flowing all through our showcase, and then through the hundreds of sessions that we had. So we orchestrated and thought through every element of that, and, and you know, so that everything was consistent, and then really thought about just how do we produce this, and to Jason's point, not thinking of it as a keynote, but how do we produce this in a way that it makes it easy to consume and emotionally connect? Because you start to feel like, oh, that they brought it to life in a simple way that's visual for me and graphic, and now I understand it, right? So Human focused. Leverage. Exactly, human focused, and you know, sometimes uh, getting that simplicity is hard, you know, but it, we, we had the benefit of an amazing canvas to do that, along with a lot of time spent on every word and the messaging, so good. So the NVIDIA AI computing with HPE, Jensen went through the stack, which I thought was really instructive, and then the HPE private cloud for <coughs> AI, uh, bundling st storage servers, networking GreenLake, the whole as a service message, I thought that came through really clearly. Help us understand how that's different than what we heard in early May from Dell, the, the AI factory. What's different? Well, I think Antonio hit on all of the high points. Let me, let me kind of start at the beginning of the way that we deliver. We talk about this being turnkey. What they're kind of doing is, you know, they can stack up the parts and put them in a rack and, you know, there's a lot of uh, moving parts and people that's delivering that, you know, finally to the customer. Um, ours is already pre-integrated, pre-tested, pre pre um, and it's, it's ready to roll in the four sizes that we have and easily, you know, expandable. Um, but that just kind of solves the day zero, day one problem for customers, right? Um, we do it in a fundamentally different way than they, than they did, pre-integrated, automated. It's the day two experience, it's kind of like the keynote. What's the difference between that and a keynote? That's an experience. What Dell is, has is an integrated stack. It's a reference architecture that some services people put together. We said, no, we are the only ones in the industry with a, a, a hybrid cloud platform. We've been investing in HP GreenLake for five years. And we said, why don't we take that experience and the software capabilities we have, wrap them around the NIM stack and the entire NVIDIA AI enterprise stack, and say, how do we just make everything a click away? If you're a, a data scientist, a data engineer, an AI operations, IT, everyone has access to what they need to bring that complex stack together. Actually, not yeah. bring it together, use it, right? Yeah. And, and create things. Um, and that's what's really special. It's literally plug it in, three clicks, 24 seconds, you're, you, you're going to be productive. Yeah, so that's important because you hear the NIMS, NEMO, CUDA, like what is all this? It's kind of overwhelming sometimes yeah. for customers. The other thing that really resonated with me in Antonio's keynote, he said, Gen AI is a distributed workload. I said, that's yes. That's right. Yes. That's exactly right. Exactly. And that's a really hard engineering and computer science problem because you have latency, you have to create the same experience right. across those estates. It's, you know, it's not just hybrid, you know, sometimes we call it super cloud, that was sort of our, our term to, as a metaphor for right. that consistent experience across. So that's a really hard engineering problem. Talk about how you guys are trying to solve that. 
Yeah, no, I'd be happy to. I, you know, for, again, it starts with the design and the integration and, and bringing it all together. Um, but then we brought kind of two different layers of orchestration into this, both container and, yep. and, and, and virtual machines, different runtimes that can connect um, all the data sources. We can take data from public cloud, um, on-prem, at the edge, bring that together in one global namespace without moving the data, right? So the data can reside where it wants to go. We feed all that up into the system, and then the orchestration around containers and VMs to, for the NIMs and the, the models and the different pieces, and then finally connecting in the compute resources, storage resources that you need to actually do work on it. And it's that experience is what is really different and unique and something that, that no one else can really and, do. Yeah, we talked a lot about how to AI accelerates hybrid and then we're able to connect this all into HV GreenLake. So we've been talking about this now, HV GreenLake, five plus years, and what you saw is us continue to evolve our story and now really deliver AI workloads you know, in that environment. So we wanted to just keep that continuity because that's what's unique and different. And you know, we talked a lot about today too, just simplifying and taking away a lot of the complexity to get, get up and running. I think the, the other thing is just the, the go to market element of this as well, right? Significant there, training our sales force. Uh, we had our top 1,500 partners yesterday Again, getting them all spun up. So being able to have a lot of people who are educated on the HPE and NVIDIA co-developed stack, right? So they can go out and, and have that conversation in front of the customer. Can we double click on that? Because John Furry actually said to me, make sure you're asking about the go-to-market, because that's one of the most interesting aspects. So it's the go-to-market not just with NVIDIA, but it's also the GSIs are playing a big role. Yes. Um, it might, probably more prominent than any Discover that I've seen. And is that just, is, how real is that? Very real, and I think you'll see that, that ecosystem continue to grow, yeah. right? And I think a lot of it is we see them starting to invest more around the HPE ecosystem and extend that, you know, their unique value. And that's what we're trying to do, is be able to show up in front of the customer and bring unique value, whether it's in a vertical or a use case area, to be able to help them on their journey. Yeah, no, I mean, that's what they're actually helping with. It. You say, well, this, the solution's so simple, why do I need you know, GSIs and whatever? Integrating that into a business process, right? Connecting all of those elements and actually running it inside of an enterprise with you know enterprise grade expectations. That's where they really they help come in and and uh, whether you know customers are saying, hey, I need I need help implementation, I need help scaling, um, you know, I just need help on my business case. That's where the GSIs are really going to play a role. A lot of customers too that we talk to, they're even looking for help on just help me get my data right. Right, because that's so foundational. I mean, everybody wants to take advantage of AI, but you, you first have to get data modernization and be able to have your data all in one format and be able to, right. to leverage that. So, you know, the conversation in many cases starts there. We were at Snowflake two weeks ago, and all we talked about was governing your data, because it's not an easy thing to do. Right? No, and there's a lot of complexity that goes into making things simple. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Giving us a little bit of a preview of what's going to happen on day two, Fidelma's keynote is tomorrow. Can you give our viewers a little taste of what we might expect to hear? Yeah, for Fidelma, it's going to be tremendous. Um, what we've spent a lot of our time on for tomorrow is, is live demonstrations. So actually going through and bringing that experience to life. Um, we're going to have a full demonstration on our capabilities within uh, HB GreenLake for supporting multiple runtimes. We'll be showing off our, or previewing our, our upcoming uh, virtualization capability. And then we're going to transition and completely unpack uh, private cloud AI. And you know, just from, again, day zero, day one, and then we're going to show all kinds of use cases to actually how quickly we can stand up and build AI applications, use cases, chatbots, things like that. So um, she's going to bring it to life. Yeah, the power of the model here is, you know, Antonio can, at a high level, really kind of lay out the vision and the strategy, and then Fidelma can double click. So we hear so much from our attendees, they love that, right? It's a very technical audience that we have here, and that's where we go deeper into the use cases. She's pretty pumped up. We saw her up in, up in her suite. It's funny, when I was at, in Houston at HQ, Jason and I did a little discovery yeah. preview that was yeah. so much fun. And I was hanging out afterwards, I had a meeting with the HPE Financial Services folks, because I wanted to better understand it. You guys are always talking about it on the earnings call, which by the way, congratulations on very strong earnings last quarter. Thank you. Like, I got to understand this better, so I had a meeting and I was hanging around the lobby, and lo and behold, I saw Fidelma, whom I've known for years. Yeah. She's on Cloud9, pumping up for her keynote. Yeah. Tomorrow I saw Jim Odorizio that same day. Yeah. And so, um, really excited to hear what's, what's, uh, what's going on there, day two. I have, to, I have to give a massive shout out to Fidelma yeah. and the team. 
Um, they, they developed this solution incredibly fast. Uh, obviously part of it was accelerated because of all the investments we made in, in HP GreenLake and the platform, but um, it was not easy you know, getting to this point and you know, I think we really owed it to them to give them a killer announcement today. Yeah. Yeah, and I was, like I said, I referenced their, their earnings call, uh, their earnings print. It's always nice to have that momentum. Not only that, but just the, the way that you have clear visibility on guidance, the AI server backlog, uh, compressing the time frame to get GPUs. So a lot of tailwinds. Who knows when it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a bump in the road. We, we've seen these waves before, but right now you got to double down and go hard. Yeah, we and got um, the momentum. Exactly. What's really exciting to me too is to hear the emphasis that HPE is putting on human creativity too. And yes. you know, Antonio Neri, he's a painter and yes. he's a creative thinker himself. Oh and yeah. That, was really, that really came through as part of your messaging too. Was that intentional? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. You know, we always joke, Jason and I, we, we, we do a lot of different things with Antonio. And some meetings, like if we're doing a brand campaign, which we're launching a new brand and it's- Well, we uh, launched it in that unlock, keynote. Unlock yeah. Ambition and it's all about our customers and bringing their stories through, but we'll have the conversation and say, we're tapping into the artistic side of Antonio, right? And so, you know, he could there, but he can also go very, very deep engineering because you, you heard him on, you know, with Jensen, right? He is deep, deep into the technology. So, yeah, it's uh, actually, it's a dream for us to have a CEO, you know, that can, that can kind of think both ways. Right, I mean, brain, the left big, brain kind of The takeaway yeah. was that, Technologies are just tools, like paint brushes, right? You yeah. need the human mind in concert with those great tools. And so if we could bring all the great tools for AI from NVIDIA and from HPE together into one experience, it's, I'm really looking forward to what our customers are going to do with it. And then marry it with the expertise. Our expertise and expertise you know, out with our partner, that's where you really start to see the power. The other thing that really resonated with me uh, was Antonio said that we've been working really hard, I call it the framework, for AI, privacy, it's got to be human focus, it's got to be access for all, it's got to be responsible, robust and tested in a continuous basis. And I think HP Labs is working on, yeah. on this. Kirk's coming on later, yeah. I'll dig into that. Yeah. It's not just motherhood and apple pie, it's no. actually- it's And that's something we've do. had for three or Over four five years. years. Yeah. Over five years. Five years, so it's something that's been guiding us in this space and you know, we, we, are, we are very, um, culture-driven company. You know, everything we do is focused on doing things the right way, so we live those principles. We're, we're, we're trying yeah. to be a steward. That's what Antonio yeah. said, right? And um, it's, you, you know, it's kind of, the, your, your instinct is just to rush in, but sometimes that can be really dangerous too, right? So, um, thank God we have Hewlett Packard Labs because they sit around and think of these things and, yeah. you know, deeply and, 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 and start creating new technologies that are going to um, deliver on those five principles. And Antonio referenced Bill and Dave, 80 plus year old company, but to, to the point on culture, and I saw this a year ago, uh, that storage announcement, you guys invited us to the, uh, uh, yeah. the all hands. All hands, yeah. And the, the, the cultural uh, uh, impact was, was, was visible. Yeah. And it wasn't, it, I remember I, I was looking around the audience to the employee base and they were just beaming. There was so such pride being part of you know, HPE and Antonio I think has really set that tone. He has. A lot of fun, it was yes. a really fun thing. Yep. The yep. band was playing, your CISO, who's your CISO's name? Uh, he was hosting. Bobby. Uh, Bobby. Yeah. Yes. Great, great host. I was like, wow, <laughs> yeah. learned some things as a Cube host. So it was yeah. fantastic. The culture is so important. So. It is. Yeah. Anyway, congratulations, guys. All right, really thank you. Thank you. Fantastic being here. Thanks for always this great set. Absolutely. Set us up. Uh, really appreciate the great guests as well. Of course. Well. Thanks for the partnership. You guys thank always you. do a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, Jason, thank you again for coming on the Cube. Awesome. Happy to be here. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.